My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So it might strike us strange that we celebrate a feast of a martyr the day after Christmas. It seems to us that more than likely we would be celebrating the Christmas feast, and actually the church continues to do so. For, unlike the rest of the world, some people are putting their trees away now, the church continues to celebrate for eight days an octave. But this is actually an important feast in the church's year. And if you listen carefully to the story of the Nativity, you will note that the story ends with the shepherds going out to proclaim the good news of what God has done for us. The good news of God coming among us in Jesus Christ. The whole scriptures point to this one thing which Jesus speaks of so beautifully today in Matthew's Gospel. It's perhaps one of the most beautiful lines in all the scriptures. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. How often have I desired to gather you together. The whole point of the scriptures, the whole message of the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Gospel, is this invitation of God to come into right relationship with God and with each other. And if you read over the Old Testament, you will see that God repeatedly sends prophets, sages, calling people to conversion, calling to align their lives with God, for then they shall have freedom and have life. But over and over, the people decide to go another way, often much to their own death and destruction. So ultimately, the church sees in Jesus Christ God's ultimate act in coming to proclaim life and life for the world. And it becomes the church's imperative, our role as a church, to proclaim and witness to that good news. Now, some of you who may be familiar with the, the gospel writer Luke, Luke is believed to also have written the book of Acts. In the gospel of Luke, it's all about Jesus revealing the glory of God. But in Acts, it's about us, the church, proclaiming the good work of God. Proclaiming the good news of God's love and grace to all. But funny enough, we're not always so willing to receive that. Sometimes it's difficult to hear that message. And that is precisely what we get with St. Stephen here, the very first Christian martyr recorded within the church. Stephen clearly had desired, he was a deacon, so he was one who shared the treasures, the gifts of the church with the poor, with the oppressed, with, with those who were suffering, but clearly his ministry ran into conflict with the authorities of the day. Perhaps it challenged them. Perhaps Stephen's ministry revealed the ways in which they weren't fully loving God and each other. We don't know. What Acts simply tells us is that the authorities were greatly disturbed by what he was doing, that he was doing a new thing. And Stephen's witness must have been so profound that it, they just couldn't tolerate. And like all the prophets who had come before them, they killed him. They could not accept this one man into their midst. Now we may think of this as stuff as legend of past, lores of past, but the reality is, is I think we too cannot accept prophets who come to proclaim peace, love, and grace. If you look in the 20th century, there have been more martyrs in the Christian church than perhaps all the centuries brought together before. And many of those martyrs, like Oscar Romero, the Archbishop of El Salvador, lost their lives simply for proclaiming the justice and goodness of God 
the love of God. This feast is an invitation for you and I to embrace that way of life, that way of love, and to go out into the world to proclaim freedom, hope, and love for all God's people. And to be willing to do so even at the cost of one's own life. To be willing to sacrifice all that we have. I'll just close with a simple observation. I'm not sure if you saw in the news today, but this morning the previous Archbishop of Cape Town, South Africa, Desmond Tutu, had died. And if there's anyone in the 20th and 21st century who I think perhaps embodied and exemplified this love and compassion of God, it was he. So it's not just the saints of past who proclaimed the goodness of God, such as Stephen and all the countless martyrs before us, but it is even the holy ones who've gone before us in faith. The invitation for us is will we follow in the path of saints and live and work and proclaim the goodness of God to all. Amen.